Hey, this is Helen. You got tech summary questions. I got your answers. Hey guys, before we dive deep into the text and get our heads swimming, Bart's perception, his way of thinking of photography will change the way that you view photography forever and ever and ever and ever. It's like taking the red pill in the matrix, that type of forever, forever. Okay, so Barth thinks that when we get in front of a camera or we sense the presence of a camera around us, especially when someone points it at us, Barth says everything changes. We immediately constitute ourselves in the process of posing. We instantaneously make another body for ourselves. It's as though we have seen so many photos and certain poses throughout the years that we try to imitate these characters and transform ourselves into poses that are imitations of what we've seen before. So Barth calls this whole social game a photographic ritual. We know we're posing, we want the audience to know that we're posing, but this effort, he writes, that this must reinforce and present our precious essence of our individuality or our identity. The pose needs to reflect our identity. So we try to present ourselves for the photograph, but we get really frustrated because myself, myself never coincides with my image that I give off. No matter what our image represents in photographs, it's just never what we really want to look like or to signify, no matter if we like it or not, though. Our bodies are always signifying meaning, and the meaning that we signify isn't something that we wish to portray sometimes. I don't know, maybe I'm a very serious person, and I want other people to know that I'm a very serious person, but the photographer caught me in a moment when I was laughing. The photograph is also interesting because it objectifies us. It turns us into an object. The photograph of us isn't really us. It's a fragment of the true complexity that is you and I, my friend. Maybe the photograph is only my face and it fails to capture my whole body. And even if it does capture my whole body, what about my thoughts? What about my mind? I was thinking in that particular moment, wasn't I? <laughs> when the photograph was snapped. Photography transforms us from a complex, dynamic, moving subject into an immobile representation of our body, an object without a mind, without a voice, without thoughts, just a representation of what we look like. And Barth thinks that we feel this objectification, this uneasiness trying to pose and give an authentic expression of ourselves to the camera, to the photographer. We see ourselves, we feel ourselves, coming, becoming objects. Barth says that we feel this micro version of death in the flesh or the click of the camera. I'm truly becoming a specter for you, for I. So this objectification, this immobilization of ourselves, this death of our subjects concerns us, especially if our picture is released to the public sphere. You guys feel the anxiety? I do. Imagine our image being reproduced on magazines on a mass scale. Perhaps it's not us who owns this objectification of us or this photograph of us. Maybe some photographer was in the bushes, took it, ran off and sold it to the magazine people or took it to some other douchey magazine. We have no control over our image. But Barr says it's our political right to protect the representations of us. What do you think, man? Leave a comment underneath this video right now. So, Barth moves on to different subjects within this book. He did what? Yeah. <laughs> Barth thinks that we attach ourselves to certain aesthetic styles, don't we? I like this, I don't like that. What photographer or photographs or what types of styles calls to you, my friend, that sets you off, that makes your head spin? For surely not every photograph calls to our imagination, to our soul, or sends our calm head temporarily into an emotional spiral. What animates me? What types of photos animate you? Now, Barr says that it's our interest in the photograph that sets the photograph alive and makes it come alive. The photograph is for the human. It's for us to embed emotion or meaning into the photograph. So Barth is definitely taking a deep dive into understanding the photograph's power, the subtle effects that animate us. He is on an investigation to figure out why the photograph, why they have power. He writes that there's a whole 
network of essences. There's material essences or regional essences. These essences produce powerful effects on the human mind that makes us feel emotions. The material essences would be the physical, the chemical, optical study of the photograph, while the regional essences, e.g. the aesthetics, the historical or the cultural context, the signifiers. Basically, there's many signifiers that our mind associates with particular time periods, cultures, and these signifiers produce meaning for us, or the power, the effect that we've been trying to understand right this instance. Ah! <laughs> so the photograph has functions. It informs us. It represents certain things like histories, time periods, cultures, meanings. We all have this cataloged in our brain. Maybe it's a wedding, maybe it's a funeral, but each photograph represents something. And that is if the photograph is good. If the photograph is just of grass, then it's not really much for us to associate meaning with. But if the photograph is of this nice luxury car, this may provoke desire within us because it has meaning. So the photograph is only for the human, for us and for other people to consume. That's why it's an object. It exists for humans. It makes them feel emotion.